Good afternoon again, everyone. Like I said, today we will be watching videos. The first two videos we will be playing for you are on personal development. And the second one, the, last, the third video we will be playing will be on business strategies. So please bear with us. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat box. Then we will be looking at them when Tuli joins us to be um, for the discussion part of our session. Thank you and I hope you enjoy. Sorry, just give me one second. It's not wanting to share the right one. One second. Okay, no problem. Hi, Denise, there's no audio. Is it like that? There's no sound coming through. Uh, I can fully see the whole picture, but you assume that if you see enough of the pieces of the puzzle that you'll be okay. This is a problem because assumptions short circuit and undermine learning. Okay, sorry guys. I'm just trying to check why the audio is not playing. No, it was playing just now. Okay. Sorry. Believe that you don't know everything about your goal and must learn more. Even if you've done extensive research about your goal, please understand that you cannot know everything. There will always be a blind spot. There will always be room for improvement. Most people are able to handle this, but the problem is the older you get, the more you assume. It's very easy to think that you know everything about your goals, so you assume that you've got it figured out. You admit that you don't fully see the whole picture, but you assume that if you see enough of the pieces of the puzzle that you'll be okay. This is a problem because assumptions short circuit and undermine learning. You're not looking at your problem set with a fully open mind. Instead, you think that if you see certain patterns, you will just use solutions that you did in the past because this is familiar enough to you. You can't do that. Assume a growth mindset. When you assume a growth mindset, you know that you begin from the initial proposition that you don't know everything. You may have done this at some level before, but you haven't done this exact project before. When you assume that there are limitations to your knowledge, you are more likely to grow. You're more likely to ask for help. You're more likely to access resources to give you the information you need to make progress. How does this work? When you operate with a growth mindset, you first focus on your core competency. We're not jacks of all trades. We all have certain core competencies. Find yours. Once you've identified these, work outward from it. Here's how I do it. I look at my goal and I break it down based on my core competency. I list down the things that I know like the back of my hand and then everything else. These are called non-core elements. What do you do with these? You can delegate, outsource, postpone, ignore, or forget them. It all depends on how important they are, what their effects are on your ultimate goal, and how pressing they are. Regardless, if they fall outside of your core competency, do not hesitate to delegate, outsource, postpone, ignore, or forget. By doing so, you increase your mastery over your project. You focus on what's important, and you leave less important stuff to the hands of experienced specialists, people you work with, people you respect, or you just postpone, ignore, or forget. This leads you to become a more effective goal manager.
Guys, I'm just getting the second recording up for us. best practices when adopting a success mindset. Congratulations, you've reached the end of this training. Please note that as empowering as the information shared in this training may seem to you, it's not going to change your life or lead you to success if you don't take action. You can't just treat it like mental candy. That's not going to work. You have to carry it out. You have to implement them. You have to tweak them. You have to customize them to your set of circumstances. In other words, you have to take action. Once you've carried these out, here are some best practices that will help boost your results. Mindsets are like muscles. When you adopt these mindsets, please understand that you have to test them. You have to use them and challenge them. In other words, they're like muscles. Remember the first time you went to the gym and tried some weights at the bench press? It probably was not a pretty sight. It probably wasn't that positive of an experience. But the more you did it, the more you got used to it. You're able to lift heavier and heavier weights. What you're doing is you're challenging your muscles. Plus, you're also getting them used to repetitive patterns. The same applies to mindsets. It's not enough for you to use these mindsets once or even twice. You have to use them over and over. They have to become part of you. Also, you have to grow them by challenging them. Use them in different situations. Scale up the challenge. Whatever the case, you have to apply pressure on them for them to get stronger and for them to produce better results. There is no better time than now to start. Don't trick yourself into thinking that there is always tomorrow. You have to start now. You don't have to do much, but you have to take action now. Stop waiting for tomorrow. Stop waiting for things to be just right, for things to feel right. You're just giving yourself excuses when you do that. Instead, you have to commit. It. Every setback is an opportunity to learn. Make no mistake. You're going to run into problems adopting the success mindsets I have described in this training. For whatever reason, there will be an obstacle or two. Instead of crumpling like a paper bag the next time you are challenged or experience a setback, look at them as opportunities. Don't get all emotionally worked up. Instead, focus on the sense that you've seen this before. Focus on the sense that this is not all that unexpected. Because when you're in that emotional state or frame of mind, you're more likely to look at the setback as an opportunity to learn. What could you have done differently? What could your attitude have been? How can you anticipate this issue and prevent it from happening again? Regardless, be ready to learn. One of the best attitudes you can assume when trying to adopt these mindsets is to assume the attitude of a student. When you're a student, mistakes are not the end of the world. They're definitely not a source of humiliation or embarrassment. Instead, you often chuckle or laugh, and then you figure it out, then you try again and again, and things get smoother. If you have a system, you will not fail. Finally, you should get a system going. I've already discussed one possible way to deal with setbacks, which is to identify, optimize, dominate, and scale. Come up with your own variation. Come up with something that better fits your particular set of circumstances. Whatever the case may be, come up with a system that is truly yours. Please note that the information that I shared with you here are just starting points. That's all they are. They just lay out a basic foundation, but it's up to you to tweak, adapt, and configure them so they produce the best results in your life. That is your responsibility. That's how you take control over this whole process.
apologies everyone we're just going to um come back with the presentation just now please just give us a second just technical Hello, entrepreneurs. I am at the airport, and um, so it's a little bit loud. Apologies for that. We have not planned for this. Um, the traveling, but be that may be, uh, welcome. My name is Precious. I'm gonna talk through to on the things relating to strategy. But as I was receiving your um issues on the finance success uh, WhatsApp, it was very clear that majority of you are doing the work as, um, side la as a side hustle. You do not focus on one industry. Uh, and also the problems that you are facing in your business, you have not analyzed to understand why. Why are you experiencing low sales and you have not analyzed if then it's marketing. Is it because maybe you're not positioning your product correct or you don't have any marketing activities? So I think sometimes when you're solving a problem, you're trying to solve a problem and you don't have a root cause, then you kind of then gonna continue just chasing your tail. Um, and I also think then this relates to problem solving and idea generation. Uh, in terms of how then it's going to lead you there to a strategy. So let's just jump to it uh, and see. Let's validate first that whatever that you are doing is the right idea. We are really solving the real pain for your community. So what does that mean? It means that you're going to need to choose a problem that is experienced by many people. Um, and the, 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 the rule of Thumb on this one is really about using the hierarchy of, of needs in terms of Maslow and choose the one that is at the bottom of the triangle, uh, which is the foundation. Because then that is experienced by most people, especially within South African context. And number two, you have to choose a problem which you yourself are experiencing. You then reflect your experiences and challenges as you are taking it, but you don't solve it for yourself, but you solve it for everyone who has it. And that is very important because then you are closer to your problem, but also you have a best interest to actually making sure it works. As I said, uh, we, we also have to work through the root cause. 
this problem that you are solving, what is causing it? Go deeper in understanding why is this problem not getting resolved by the current alternative? What are the factors that are contributing to making this problem worse? As you are building that, you can also then now start finding what are the current alternatives? And please don't say that you, your business idea or what you are doing is different to any other person. It might be different, but there are alternatives which the customers are using to solve that problem. Do a proper research to get to a deep dive on identifying the gaps and the opportunities to innovate on the alternative. Find out what are the weaknesses of, this, of these alternatives so that it allows you to be able then to solve this problem. I also think as you are moving on step five, you assess the cost. How much does it cost this to your custom if this problem or to this person who's experiencing this problem? How much does it cost you? Because you are also yourself experiencing that problem. What's the cost to the society at large? What does that mean in terms of the spend and the government? That is important because you're making the problem not just about you, you're making it a society problem, but you then make it bigger. You are able to quantify it. This quantification of the problem also allows you to be able to see how big is the market share. Visualize also the consequences of not solving this problem. You might have not necessarily um, come to a bottom of it in a long term. If this problem remains unresolved, how would it look like? This highlights the ages and the importance of making sure that the solution is found. Now, assuming you've done all of that and you make sure also that the problem that you're solving is, is, is highlighted in terms of your skill, you have sufficient skills to be able to solve the problem, then we can move on more detail. So in that detail, you are now saying, okay, I have a mini checklist of that I'm, I'm actually solving a problem that is worth solving because there are lots of people who are experiencing it. But also there is enough market for it and my offering is unique and valuable. And I've aligned my this problem to my passion or to my and my expertise. But also I'm experiencing the problem. So I'm gonna be the first customer for it. And you then also have to identify what are the barriers to entry and challenges that you might incur in this business should you then be able to enter into it. When you have done that, you need to actually now write down a target customer profile based on the description of the problem, the needs, the enemy, insight that tell their story. The insight that tell their story is really about you talking in terms of the custom. What is it the customer feels and think about this thing? What is their insight? So when you talk about enemy, you're really talking about what are the things that the customer sees uh, that they don't like about this problem? And then how do they buy? What is their buying process? And what do they think and feel and do and see before they have this problem and after? so that you can kind of see how you're gonna measure whether you're successful or not successful. You then use that small mini customer profile to build in the customer benefit ladder. And I'm gonna share that as an example for you uh, uh, just now. The, the functionality is really at the features, the basic, what is this solution is supposed to be providing? And then also you include both emotional benefit and also financial uh, functional benefit. When you have done that, you have to complete your positioning. A positioning allow you to then say, the target customer profile is so and so. You're gonna be very descriptive of it. It's a mom who is between this age and this age, who has children between this age group, who's a working mom, Darida, who stays in a suburb. That's a full description of who that customer is. You then say it's for 
this solution is to help them is to uh, assist them achieve one, two, three, so that they can then leave, which is now leading also even to the benefit. And because, which is now a reason to believe, this is really a sign to saying the things that makes you believe that your solution is the best. And that is what we need to just make sure that you put that in because that then is convincing the customer as you're doing your brand positioning to actually be able to do this. Now, assuming you've done that and you're happy that you are solving the right problem for the right person, you have the right benefit, you frame your solution right, you can then move to part two. Part two is really is about seven things. One, focusing on your vision, building up your vision, conducting an external analysis. And guys, I'm going to run through this pretty fast because I had already shared with you the videos relating to this. And then you will, you have the, you, for external analysis, you will use the pastel. And this pastel is used for a sector. Whereas when you're using for the market and industry, you will use five forces of four. These are frameworks that I use in strategic planning. Once you have done that, you will then conduct a SWOT analysis. You basically take each of the factors that you have identified under PESTEL and the factors that you have identified under um, your SWOT, and you now categorize under them for five forces of quarter. You then categorize them according to your SWOT, meaning I now know that factor brings strength, I now know that factor brings me opportunity or a threat. And then you will need also to conduct the internal assessment, which is basically looking at what are you good at? What are the competencies you have based on where you, where you wanna go in terms of your vision? You also then have to understand that when you are building those competencies, you are measuring your performance, you are analyzing how have you performed before. Please make sure you, you cover qualitative and quantitative. Um, and these qualitative and quantitative allows you to not just measure the end results, but also measure the input. How many times are we doing this? Is it working or not working? So it's both also looking at how is our performance in the overall. Use that to then update your SWOT analysis. You will also need to make sure that you really look at your business model canvas just to make sure that your value proposition is right, the, the suppliers that you are actually uh, using to add value into your product, including the segment of your customers is actually updated because it might change as you are actually learning more and updating your industry information. Now, as you are building this, you will then now start using the SWOT analysis so on your SWOT analysis, you're going to need to focus on the strength. The strength is really around helping you to make sure that you, your, your vision is actually achieved based on your core competence. But also, it's helping you to understand that you're going to need to bring a unique resource or an asset which does not exist already in the market because if it if it exists in the market, therefore you're gonna have a problem with dif differentiating yourself in the market, and then you're then gonna have a competition where you're then not gonna be able to charge what you're worth. Also, it's gonna be about building up a brand. It's also gonna be about building up a customer loyalty. What are the things that you think you can do to have a, a good brand reputation? And every product needs to have a good reputation, plus also a customer loyalty. You then invest also in talent and organizing uh, your, 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 your organization in making sure that you are improving on what you actually have. It is very important entrepreneurs to make sure that you focus on what your strength is. Make that bigger, make that work. And also it allows you to be able to do it to position yourself competitively, you take advantage by capitalizing on the opportunities that I, that also differentiates you from the competitors. 
innovation and adoption, that is very important. We spoke about that when we spoke about AI last time. Uh, I'm going to share, uh, we'll share the details with you on the some of the, the videos and also the information that can help you to innovate and adapt to AI. We also have the maximizing of the resources. So you're going to need to ask yourself, what resources do I have? And how am I utilizing those resources? Sometimes the resources might be just time. If you have time and you have access to computers, then invest on the skill. Grow one skill at a time. And then you use that skill to solve the problems that you have. So prioritize on working consistently on the problems that you have by improving the skill. Remember, when we fail, it's not because uh, it's the circumstances because we just don't know enough about the problem. Uh, and then or when we take uh, weaknesses, weaknesses is really for the areas for improvement. It can be the skills gap, which is, can be a lack of expertise. It can also even not having enough finances. There's You can manage the financial risk is high. It can be maybe we increase the quality of the product or service. It can be improving of internal processes and also it can be even about some matters that though are within your business which might actually maybe employee or labor relations issues now threats is generally something that is outside of the environment again even on that you need to ask yourself what can i do about that threat uh, how does it then affect my strategy uh, should I actually mitigate or should I leave it? Or is it something that I can actually put a contingency plan to deal with the impact of it? Um, the really also is about, you need to understand that threats are there for you to monitor how the market or where the market is actually going to go. Consistently, either also just as you are building up your business, that some of the things that you're going to do are really around you improving on making sure that you are better than your competitors so that you can distinguish yourself. That's why it's important to know your value proposition and the differentiator, plus also what are your biggest strengths. Okay. So I think I've given you the overall of um this. I'm going to just try now to open up some of the challenges that you guys have shared with us that you yeah. will then be able to, 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 to have a look at. And so I will read them out loud and you will know who you are. So we have one case. Okay, let me share. I will read them loud G and then I will share. So this guy, uh, this person says, um, yeah, I think, it, yeah. He says uh, he's a tuck shop owner. He has no sales due to many Parkinson's shops around my township. I'm surrounded by more than six of them, uh, of their town, right? And I think one, I have a lot of responses on this, but I think I wanna start with this. If you choose to be on the market, where there's a high competition, then you need to differentiate yourself. We need to localize your marketing. You need to also create a diversity of a product that others are not offering, doesn't matter who. Uh, you also need to create a, an experience for your customers. You also need to see if you can collaborate with your community on making sure that maybe there's events, there's promotions, and and then you you offer that to that 
to that. So you partner maybe with other South African uh, tax shop owners. And you might also need to relook really at your pricing strategy to make sure that you are maintaining your profitability. That is when you decide you want to stay in that market. But I, I'm also saying to you, if you cannot compete, get out of that market, learn a new skill and start a new business. I just want to also just to, 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 to articulate that. So let me come, there's another one. There's another co um, question that was also shared with us. I think it was someone who said that they actually having a lack of market. They have low sales because there is no marketing. They don't have a marketing strategy. So the process of doing a market strategy is exactly as when you're doing it for the organization. It's the same process where you focus really on identifying what is it that you want to achieve? What are your objectives? You align the objective in a measurable way, i.e. they must be smart. So maybe you may start by saying, I want to generate maybe 500,000 in this year or this month. Then you say, okay, 500,000, how many units do I need to sell? Okay, that will mean I'm selling maybe 200 units to make a 500,000. Okay. From that, you then say, okay, I'm going to do brand awareness. I'm going to actually uh, go back to my previous clients and sell to them if the product allows, the nature of the product allows that. I'm also going to uh, possibly do things like digital marketing, uh, which will allow me to target certain people. I can map those certain people by the customer profile of the previous customers that have bought from me. So, and then as you are working, putting these objectives, you then need to ask yourself, okay, what is my strength in my business on this function? In me marketing, what is my strength? Oh, maybe I have a great team. Uh, maybe I've done this before, uh, or maybe I know what tool to use and we have a tool. Those are your strengths. But then you're gonna need to look at what? your weaknesses. Why you have not been doing the strategy? How is this strategy? Uh, has How come maybe you had a strategy, but maybe it didn't work? So maybe that could be a weakness because you have not therefore figured out how to design a marketing strategy that will actually generate the revenue. You might find that you have a great marketing strategy, but you do not have a sale, a sales function that is able to capture the, the, the marketing that you have done. So the effort that you have put in on your marketing does not result to a sale. So maybe again, look at your sales process. Is your sales process easy and, and also following the buying pattern of the custom? Because it, it must talk to the buying uh, pattern of the custom. You might then find then from that, as you are building this SWOT analysis for this, you pick up the things that you need to improve on your processes and your systems. It doesn't matter what system you're gonna be using and what marketing uh, strategy it is. It's also about how you're gonna measure it. But does that marketing strategy match with the customer profile, their buying pattern, plus also the preference by the customers, okay? Now, I also just want to say that you're not going to get this process the first time you're doing it, even the second time or even the third time. Uh, maybe try to see if you can't do this and highlight. Remember, you're going to need to also update your business model. You're going to need to also make sure that you keep yourself up to date with the industry trends. You're also going to need to make sure that you are taking a feedback from your business where things, when you are not meeting target, you analyze and face the fact that what you are doing is not working and then go back again to the drawing board to change things that are not working. So I just wanna... Okay. So I also just wanna, I'm, I'm gonna go through some of them because uh, as I said, 
you guys have been sending them as I was uh, running the training, uh, some of this. So that is one person. So we have um, someone who says, uh, I am, um, okay, I'm not going to share the screen because it's got someone else's phone number. Says, I'm a, I'm a agriculture, I'm in agriculture sector. We do have the cannabis cultivation and facilitation. And the main issue is the working capital. Uh, and almost all the lands belong to the municipal. So somehow we're limited in other areas. Okay. So it seems like there's two problems there. Again, the issue that you are raising there is not a strategy problem. It's a it's it's more of um your inability to plan. You should have known what is your required working capital. Guys, you work out your working capital from your cash that you have in the bank, the suppliers that you actually have in terms of how long you take to pay them. And the second thing is about your inventory, how you are managing your inventory. And the last one is how the customers are paying. That's a working capital issue. Now, when you say my problem is working capital, are you saying those four areas? Are you saying you're sitting with too much stock? Because if you're sitting with too much stock, then your problem is not necessarily working capital. It's actually lack of sales. There are no sales. You're sitting with inventory that should be sold. Number two, maybe you're saying, no, precious, it's debtors. Uh, I have customers that are taking longer to pay me. Then you, your problem is in twofold on the debtors. is the collection plus also your credit worth analysis. You are not checking whether the person you are giving credit to is actually credit worth. But number two, you're also not making sure that when you have given them the credit, you actually get your money back which is now putting through collections and sending statement. And then if you're saying, no, my working capital is because maybe my my suppliers, they want their money in, it means you have a credit problem then. Your risk is credit. You do not have short-term credit. Guys, remember, credit is trust. Credit is trust. So if you are not spending enough time with the supplier creating a relationship with the supplier, they're not going to give you the money. You're going to need to create a relationship with the suppliers. I think so. And it takes a while sometimes. It takes a long time to build that relationship, uh, but you're going to need to build that relationship. You can't buy for cash, but sell for credit. Because that is just disaster in terms of cash flow. So, and then you are then saying, the, the the second problem after working capital is somehow we're limited in other areas. Maybe my question is, are you using the current area in the maximum capacity? And if the answer is yet, make that site profitable first before you expand. So someone says, I'm manufacturing product body lotion and wash. But again, even on that, I don't know what is the problem, but I presume it will be sales. I presume it should be sales. I think if you're manufacturing body lotions and body soaps and body wash, you got to need to focus on the access to market. But before you deal with access to market, position your product. What type of a product is it? Is it targeting a lower LSM, a higher LSM? Is the packaging talking to that LSM? And are you also selling at the right volume for you to be profitable? And then um, the next one is, okay, so this is the one that I had a huge problem with. This guy says, uh, I'm in the building construction and agriculture. In agriculture is where I do planting and pruning and harvesting. The main challenge is working capital and marketing. So the guys 
in marketing, okay, before I attach to marketing, I've already spoken about working capital. By just reading this, I think your problem is not even working capital. It is sales. You are not selling enough volume of the things to be able to cover your marketing expenses. Because you, whatever money that you generate, you then use for your, for whatever that you need to pay for. And you don't have enough money to then put aside for uh, working capital and also for the marketing. And I think the reason why I'm saying that is because you are saying you're doing building construction and you're doing agriculture. You can't be in two industries. You are running your business like it is a side um, hustle. You gotta need to focus on building in one area using one skill. And then in that skill, you then do different things, but you are still using the same skill. So let me make an example. If I'm a baker and I, I bake bread, for example, and I then use the skill of baking bread to teach others to break, to, to, to make more bread. I then write a book for others to actually what? Bake a bread. I then uh, sell to others my recipes. Uh, and I also, even on that, uh, help them to actually uh, write books on making a bread. I can choose also to be a wholesaler, a retailer, and but I'm going to choose based on my resources and assets that I have. If I don't have a lot of assets, i.e. I don't have an industrial machine, I will not choose to actually then sell big uh, or a lot of bread. I will go niche. I will then sell maybe specialty breads like um, I can use uh, rye bread. I can sell maybe low-carb bread. So there's lots of options I can actually make, but you gotta need to understand that that the problems that you are facing, some of them are created by you diversifying too early without having systems first, so that the thing that you are doing can run on its own. Um. Okay. So I see others are just telling me what they're doing, but they're not telling me the exact challenges. So, guys, if if you are not reinvesting the money that you are getting in your business, you are not gonna have a working capital. You are not gonna gonna have a working capital. So, a working capital comes from your profit. But if your business is not making sufficient sales it means your expenditure are exceeding uh, your sales, then you're going to have a problem. It's very likely that a person who is making, is not able to do, to make, to make a working capital available, their business is running at a loss. But also it's very likely that their credit and also their, um, their credit with their suppliers and the credit with the customers is not actually working. Okay, there's so many comments, so I'm looking through some of them. Okay, I see there are lots of people who are just sharing what is it that they are doing without necessarily sharing with me uh, what is the main challenge so that we can then address it. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm gonna just look at the old ones because there were old ones also that were shared before uh I think before most of you when were posting. So 
guys, I there's a there's a post here that say I do few things, guys. You gotta need to build your ten thousand hours. You have to be known at least for one thing. And I think some of you, you're just doing too many things. And that's why you are not getting attraction, but you're also not understanding the industry at the deeper level. It's too many things. I'm not saying you are not talented to do too many things. I guess even Richard Branson, he didn't make millions by diversifying. He made millions from one business to another. Now he has multi uh, businesses. So make sure that when you are diversifying these businesses that you are diversifying, they can run on on um, on their own. They don't need you every day. And they don't need you every day. That is very important. Because if then that business needs you every day and you are doing too many things, you will forever be an employee of that business. You will never build systems and be a direct. So, um, okay, the rest, okay, I like this one. Someone says, I train people on how to manufacture cleaning detergents. Um, and I guess, they they did uh, put more details, even though I can't see the details. Yeah, okay, so they did put the details in. So which means they're struggling with low sales. Again, um, the low sales, guys, it's about positioning. It's about you offering something that everyone is offering and you are not unique enough. Because you are not unique enough, then you're not positioned correct. So I think you got to need to check supply versus the demand. Some of you have not done a detailed research to analyze the market to make sure that your offering is so unique and different and there is a demand for it. Now, if you are training people to do a detergent, maybe they are saying to you, no, uh, we actually, uh, we, we cannot afford for you to actually offer this product or maybe we can't buy it from you. You can then consider still providing the training to them, but at a reduced price or at a reduced mode. And that you can do by recording your trainings you can also do that by writing a manual for them, a recipes on how they can mix the stuff instead of you running the training yourself. So those are the possible alternatives that you can actually replicate. That allows you to increase the number of people, but at the same time, still are generating some revenues. Please remember, the more demand it is for your product, there's a, the price will increase, but if there's a supply is higher than the demand, then your price will be lower and your sales will be also lower. And you'll be competing on the sale or on, on the price. There was also the, someone's uh, speaking about, they are doing um, manufacturing of um, the built, the manufacturers of the home furniture and also built in, in cabinet, the ottomans and the storage um, trunks. I also think this you you it, it it's more likely that the reason why you are making strategy again in your marketing is because you have not positioned yourself. So again, consider really asking yourself, who is my customer? If your customer is a homeowner, then you have to understand that as a homeowner of this product, this, this product 
can be sold to a person once after five years. Then the next question you should be asking yourself is that if then I am selling this as a once-off, how can I make sure that when the homeowner is looking for a product, they think of me? And you can find maybe even other partners to work with. Um, so maybe for a guy who who does the home furniture can actually uh, also work with guys that sell houses. Uh, you can also work with people that does catches. So it's really about collaborating also with others. That is why we also mentioned on that. I've seen quite a lot of comments with this. It then does look like majority of it is really about how you have positioned yourself, but also how you make sure that what you are doing talks to that specific customer problem, to the pain and pleasure of that customer. And that customer can actually be able to pay you. And you are clear on how much they will actually pay you. So thank you so much, entrepreneurs. I hope you have enjoyed that. And I had invited Kilima Kubani to assist you guys to actually talk through this because it was very clear that you do need someone to assist and facilitate on that in terms of customer understanding, but also to see that your strategy and your, your understanding of the industry talks to how then are you able to say, this will work, this will not work. And I think majority of you, as I said, we are treating these businesses as though they are actually a side hustle, not necessarily a day-to-day -day work. And because I feel you've diversified too much without really investing on making sure that you are doing what the best industry leaders are doing in your business. Instead, you are just looking at where am I going to get money? And some of you are having four or five businesses within the same business without actually scaling that business. And thank you so much, entrepreneurs. I hope you have enjoyed that. We have quite um, a bit of uh, backlog. We owe you an additional recording from last week, plus another video. So I'm going to be doing a few of those videos uh, soon. And thank you so much. Goodbye for now. Thank you. Cheers.
Hi. Hi. Thank you everyone for staying. Oh, okay. I was yes, not getting in. With the video, sorry. We were waiting sorry? for you to join in the meantime. Oh, okay. So that's why there was no sound. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? How are you guys doing? Hello, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are. How's everyone doing this afternoon? Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes, Tuli. Oh, good evening, okay. I can hear you. So. I think the group okay. is shy now. <laughs> I'm also <laughs> just... Hi just, guys, this is me. I think, I don't know, I hope you don't mind if I keep my video off or do you want me to keep my video on? Yeah, you can have it off, Tuli, that's fine. All right, okay, no, but this is just me just saying hello. Okay, I'm going to the group chat because I think during um the recordings that we were playing, there were some comments and just some questions as well along okay. the way. So All right. That sure. People are a bit shy to speak. So, okay, so maybe ask me the first question to set the tone. Yeah, so it's not really a question. It's more this person is just identifying that my main challenge is recruitment to recruit uh -huh. people with passion and dedication. Yeah. It so is this one re is recruit is this a recruitment of staff? Is Priscilla still with us or has she left? Because that came in from Priscilla. Okay. Because it just says recruitment of people. So I need to be certain. Is she meaning recruitment of staff? Or since we're talking about getting clients, whether she's referring to getting clients. Is Priscilla still with us? I don't think she's with us. I think she's left. Okay. Uh, if she comes back, then we will we will answer the the question. Uh, yes. Uh, so I'm open to questions. We're supposed to be talking about uh, business planning or, or strategy planning, but more than anything else, I think the important thing is really getting the context right because with strategy the context in which you operate is quite important in understanding the context. Because if you uh, draft your strategy, not really understanding the correct context, your strategy might be might be off. So, so let's hear from people. What questions do you have? I saw you've discussed mindset. I'm not sure what you discussed. So people have questions around mindset. I'm happy to answer those. Um, in terms of um, really understanding what the problem is that your business is solving. And also just to ascertain if the solution um, is adequate for that particular problem or challenge or need that your business is meeting. because that is quite key. Uh, it might sound very simplistic, but believe me, once you get that right, um, a lot of things fall into place. Do we have any, so anyone you can raise your hands and I'll recognize you. Okay, if there's no questions, then can we have comments? You've just watched videos. If I could have your thoughts and comments on the videos that you watched. Anyone? Okay, you guys are very quiet. All right, shall I volunteer you then? If no one will volunteer, can we have Joyce? Hi, Joyce, are you there? Hello, yes, I'm here. 
Yes, Joyce. Your thoughts and comments on the videos you watched? Uh, it was engaging in the sense that it opens up about yourself and your business. So for me, it was eye-opening because some of the things we tend to to separate ourselves from the business or we become so more into the business and we forget about ourselves. So I think for, for, for now on, it's like in terms of, of finance or money, they have paid something into the business, but I take the money out and do personal stuff for in term, or instead of using it to reinvest it again into the business. That's how I, I saw it. And Joyce, um, do you have separate accounts for your business and your personal account? Yes, for now I do have. In the past, I didn't. I used okay. to have one, one account. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, you, and you're paying yourself a salary? I didn't, but now I've learned that I have to pay myself first. Yeah, you have to pay yourself a salary. Because, I mean, depending, obviously how much money your business is making. And also maybe if you were employed at a certain stage uh, before starting your business, your business may not be able to maybe pay you the same salary that maybe you were getting paid when you left. But uh, the aim is to you know, build up to that salary and hopefully get to a point where your business is now able to pay you even more. Uh, than yeah. what you were earning when you were employed. All right. Fine. Are some people asking questions via the WhatsApp group? I'm checking. I'm just what? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's hear from someone else. Uh, Ramoswai. Ramoswai, hi. I'm not sure whether it's a lady or a gentleman. Ramoswai, hello. Ramoswai, are you there? Yes, okay. Good evening. 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 Yeah, so it's a gentleman. Good evening, sir. How are you? Well, thanks yourself. Good. I've, good. I've just joined in now. <clears throat> oh, I've you've just joined. joined... Yeah, I missed um, out. What, what... Did you have an opportunity to watch the videos? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, okay. That's my question. Your comments or thoughts on the videos you watched earlier? Yeah, they're, they're very insightful and it's videos that I will keep on watching and learning from them. Okay, can we yes. be more specific? And I'm, I'm, I'm still... I'm, I'm, the videos for today, if we can be more specific. Oh, okay. Yes. The videos uh -huh. from today, your comments on the videos that you watched today. Oh, shame. He's disappeared. Okay. Uh, okay. So anyone, so no one has any questions? There's a hand. Mfundo. Oh, there's a hand. Mfundo. Okay, Mfundo, please go ahead. Uh, good evening, entrepreneurs. Can I just please confirm if I'm audible? Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I just, just want, I rather don't have a question. However, I just want to just thank and thank you for the opportunity for today's uh, session this evening. I think it was really <clears throat> informative, specifically just to really um, to hear other people's challenges and, you know, um, the answers <clears throat> that our leader actually shared as well was also more educational also on my side. They're very important also just to make sure that you focus in your industry and also make sure that you research even much more deeper. I think till you actually are able to find the niche and actually have something that will actually make you stand out. Mm -hmm. um, from the previous session that I actually had, 
uh, with her, you know, one of the things that I picked up is the very importance of really focusing on what and fixing first what you want to fix and identifying as well also the problem. And through that, then you are actually will be able to be like successful with like within like your business. Mm. So for myself, within like my business, I'm um, doing um, landscaping. So also I'm really doing a lot of homework and really like researching mm. and also implementing new ideas but I, I think what I actually needed most as well is like mentorship as well so mm. I think through this session as well they are really helpful and really um making a difference within like my business per se um I think mm. us sharing about different challenges that we have then sometimes you might think you not have a problem but once you hear from us else you know challenge then mm. you actually realize actually you know you learn from the answer that our data actually normally like responds to so thank awesome. you so much, Shiraz. You're good. I've got a question for you, Mfundo. Yes, you're, yes, you're welcome. Uh, you mentioned that you are in landscaping. Yes. How long have you been running the business? Um, It's the fourth year now running the business. Okay. Um, Where are you operating? Yes. Uh, currently, I'm based in Pizza Marisbeck, but we do like travel. Um, like today, actually, I traveled to Catarist just to view a site that we that needs work to be done that side. Okay. So we do travel as well, but based in Pizza Marisburg. All right. And so, yeah. I mean, besides just solving a problem, the question I want to ask you is, yes. uh, what differentiates your business from other landscapers? Um, what I've realized, what differentiates my business from other landscapers is for me when I initially started <clears throat> mainly mm -hmm. my focus of, of course was like garden service so yes. then I said okay I need to grow from just thinking just garden service but I need to start like with the bigger picture rather so what I did I then started to specifically remodel um, my business to be more attractive to more commercial um, clients or mm -hmm. um, people that have been need services. So basically what I put as a forefront uh, for the business is like commercially your PNPs and is also mm -hmm. like landscaping, which is like maybe any outdoor leveling your your yard, mm -hmm. or not, the, not the yard, sorry, like your sides and so on. Yeah. So that's okay. how actually... I wanted to grow, I grew it actually much more bigger. So when okay. whatever, whenever I advertise like online, that's mm. like more of what is in the forefront. So then because I use Google as well, so the clients that now I get as well is the clients that I really want because when it's they the see the conversation. Instead of the domestic mm. case. Yes, and then the, the other question I have, um, mm. the products that you use, where do you source your products? So the products that I use, um, there is a, a, a company that's here in, in PMB, it's actually called Sagewoods. So mm -hmm. for now, they, uh, they are like the, uh, the company that's able to provide me with, when it comes to like plants. So for example, mm -hmm. if we have to do any plantation within a PNB or any like within this um, established um um, building. Because so, I mean, besides besides plants, obviously there's plants. You've got equipment, but I'm sure there's other products you use, like manure. I don't know. You would need. To, yes. I don't know whether you use chemicals, things like that. Because That's one true. of the ways you could um, differentiate yourself is trying to go organic. Oh yes, that's true. Yes, so, so there is to try and hmm. source. Um, manure from certain farms and you can say my manure is sourced at this part I mean and since you're in a PMB I mean just moving yes. into the the Midlands there's lots of dairy farms in the mm -hmm. in the in the Midlands you know you could source directly from the farm instead of buying from uh, the nurseries and things like that and maybe even can if you if you are maintaining plants um chemicals we would use for in, like insecticide things like that you could say you know you use only organic uh mm. like you know uh chemicals 
maybe chemicals mm. if it's organic i don't know if you can still call it a chemical yes mm. oh, that's really that, helpful. that could be something that you can use as well to differentiate yourself Oh, thank you so much. I actually didn't think <laughs> of that. Um, yes, I do know the Midlands side, mm -hmm. but I've just never thought um, just expanding to that side in terms of asking them to provide like a service. I think that mm -hmm. I'll do more research into it. I'm sure you can do some research, find out which farms can be able mm -hmm. to supply you with manure. Oh, yes, that's really helpful. And then just the other stuff, because I don't have like your um, excavator and util pieces yet, I normally like um, rinse it out and then I get a driver when mm -hmm. it comes to like your um, leveling the ground or any other that they like they require. So mm. for now, that's what I'm actually like trying to save up for is okay. more like, equipment and also when I, but when I do apply for funding, it's mostly based on like more equipment um, yes. so that yeah it will be less spending on this um uh, to prove. yes yeah. that's correct okay all right no all yeah. the best so do your research because it's little things like that that will set you apart and the the trends uh you know in the world people are looking at uh products that are um environmentally friendly Thank you so much. I think that's really um, helpful. All right. All the best, Mfundo. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. All right. Anyone else with any questions? Guys, don't be shy. I know you guys are used to pressures, but pressures trust me. <laughs> so I can <laughs> I can assure you guys you are in good hands. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Uh, Denise, you can tell them. Maybe some of them don't know oh. who truly is. They're like, mm, who is this lady? <laughs> you guys need to then Google Tuli. She's the real <laughs> deal as well. No, she's the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> so Tuli, I think everybody's making millions then. So we don't I need to be here. Yeah, no, because I'm here. Because for me, my maybe I didn't tell them my background. I mean... Before I was doing small business development, my background is in management consulting and uh, I'm a strategy consultant. So that's my background, strategy consulting. I did strategy for large organizations and government organizations and even did my master's um, in, in strategy. So I'm like a strategy guru. And when I was not doing management consulting, I was doing finance. I worked at APSA, um, APSA, what was it? A med, uh, corporate and merchant bank, which became APSA Capital. And then also worked at Investec. So, and I've also for my sins worked in corporate finance. So in terms of finance and strategy, definitely you woman so we've got anger anger hi the floor is yours hi everyone hi this to me um thank you hi. for the platform um, the unfortunate part is i had low trading from four to six so i just joined at T. okay of which is i had that one of uh, the things that I asked for on the group was mentioned, but that was before I get in. So firstly, what I'm not too sure for? if I can be able to. Please ask, because uh, okay. even with um, me, I, I, I was not, uh, the earlier session uh, was videos. So I joined in just after six to be able to just expand on things and to answer questions. Okay, um, all right. Uh, I'm in the in agricultural space doing poultry, okay. which is um it had um some problems in terms of in, in poultry, uh, how what are I you what what exactly what are you doing? I'm doing broilers. I'm just raising broilers. chickens and I sell them to raise. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you buy so, one day old, um, you buy one day old chicks. Yes, Do you and buy then I the sell chips? them at, uh, at four. 
from day one four. yes and then saw them and how after how many weeks i buy one one old and sell them mm -hmm. at four or six weeks depending on the client when okay. they want them because some okay. are also reselling and then they will take them at three some will take them mm -hmm. at four because somehow those people the street vendors will use them at four weeks but the okay. rest will want them at six weeks so it okay. depends at some point um so i i raise them differently because for human consumption i have to be careful in terms of the feeding and stuff yes. so um now the problem is um i have some funding from the other municipality so mm -hmm. i had to stop the operation we are currently running then i have to build something the other side so i have okay. the equipment that is um around uh I have 100,000, uh, so mm -hmm. I have the equipment that's worth 100,000. 100, so nice. from that 100,000, because I started with my savings, so from mm -hmm. that 100,000, I just want to make sure that I don't do any uh, mistakes. I'm building mm -hmm. something out of it, because um, it's, it's very rare to, to know to get some such amount mm -hmm. or such equipment just yes. without even contributing a thing. Mm. Yeah. So I I need some uh guidance in terms of um maybe the market size or something, but but something other than you know, you no know, like doing uh, whatever I was doing before and maybe having some problems at the end of the day and something and doesn't don't don't grow moving forward. So I just want some sort of an advice on what else can I do other than selling to resellers maybe? Um for poultry farmers, are there yeah. any specific um uh, Google trends that one can use maybe to market the business? Um yeah, that's it. Where are you based, Anga? Um I'm I'm based in Devon. Um, uh -huh. in the Durban. municipality called Harry Guala, so it's under Umzim. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then the funding you got, where, where is that funding? Which municipality? It's Harry Guala. Uh, and so then, it, it, but you current, the, you, you currently, you said you're in one municipality, but got funding from another. Yeah. Um, I'm in Devon. But still, mm. yeah, I'm still having uh, something that I'm operating in Devon okay. with my own right. personal fund. And okay. then the, the municipality that I got funding from, it's where I'm originally from, which is in Heriguala. So I have okay. to build another branch there. So okay. looking mm -hmm. at the, the, the current one that I have, it's kind of slow. So I want to build something that is better that I, where mm. I can be able to Oh, I can. Uh, although I will be there part time, as I have to train someone and so that they can, you know, be full time there. Okay. Oh, part of it is it, it building the business because somehow we, um, we were mm -hmm. told that. Okay. Tina, oh, so we I was taking where Harry Harry Koala is is what under the underback area. Yes, around there. Okay. All right. No, I had to Google so I get an understanding because I need to, before I can give you advice, I need to get a better understanding. Okay. So um, not very far from Peter Maritzburg, there is a very big rainbow chicken. Um, What do you call it? It's maybe a farm. We can call it a farm. I know there's one outside Ash Barton. Do you know that one? Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. I know it. So my advice to you, uh, perhaps, um, what's your capacity at the moment? Um, currently, I have, um, it's, I 18 square meters, but when it's yeah, fully but in growing. In terms of broilers, how, how many can... broilers do you grow every six weeks? What are you able to grow? What's your capacity? It's 300 so far to the other side, and in Durban, it's 150. 
150. Did yes. you say 150? Okay, so your current capacity is 450. Yes, okay. I can say so. Okay, which is quite small. Um, I mean, there's a couple of things that you can do. One is contacting um, Rainbow Chicken and inquiring about the enterprise development mm -hmm. program uh, because they can assist you to grow even further. So if you okay. become part of the enterprise development program, they can, as I said, assist you in terms of growing further. Obviously, the program should give you more skills, uh, possibly access to more funding to be able to increase your capacity. And then ideally, you want to have Rainbow Chicken buying from you. But obviously, for them to be able to buy mm, from you, yeah. you need to be able to meet a certain capacity. I don't know what that is, but I would assume it's a couple of thousands. Need to be able to scale up and ramp up yeah. to the point to the point that you're able to to meet. Obviously, with Rainbow, they they supply um, retailers with their own products, but they do have private clients, like for example, KFC. With KFC, they supply KFCs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what's stopping them if if you are under, you know, their program and they know that you're able to grow broilers to the specifications that are required by big clients that they can buy from you and then be able to supply other clients. So that's one thing that you can do. That's if you're really wanting to grow. So I think uh, that's because you're not far from where they're located. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. um, the other thing, um, the underback area, I mean, it's more, the, the real big economy in that area is tourism, besides the villages. It's either you're going to be supplying villages or you could mm. try and supply. There's some hotels, there's lodges. Uh, in the area that are, are you slaughtering or, mm. or not? Mm. Because if you're not, you can find an abattoir no. in the area. Uh, of, of the, the one person that I've, I've been mentioning in terms of the supply is um, our local abattoir, which is just coming yeah. from one of us, a youth as well. Yeah, is, so is I'm supplying. The abattoir in, is in, in, in Herkwala. Yes, it's in okay. Higua. Okay, so that could be the other thing that obviously um, you can try and find uh, lodges and hotels that you supply. And then um, mm -hmm. they, can they can specify in terms of, you know, the type of chicken they're looking for in terms of weight, I don't know, fat, whatever the specifications might be. Mm -hmm. And then you would have to try and meet those. And then you can then have someone slaughter the chickens and then you deliver to your customers um, processed chickens already. So it's been slaughtered, cleaned, and then you deliver instead of just selling live chickens. Oh, of which is, that's, that's where I was confused as well, whether I should just... um stick on selling the live one or I can still sell, you know, but using the, the other person, the other people's yes, um, yeah. person's upper toe. Yes, toe they then stuff. become a supplier to you. Yeah. So they can they can slaughter clean and then package for you and then you collect from them and then you go and deliver at your clients. Oh, okay. All right. That's much better. You know what I've done you, is you can still do both. You can still contact. You can you can still contact Rainbow Chicken to get to get into their enterprise development program, and then still while you're doing that, you can mm. still find because in in Underberg, that's the area. It's quite rural. So if you are trying yes, to grow, people rural. are probably they probably have their own chickens mm. in their yards. 
in a rural area. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying try and target even restaurants, restaurants, lodges, hotels in the area. And you can say, I'm going to supply you fresh chicken. Mm -hmm. you. Oh, you know, you know what, what I've done, uh, what I was, uh, hey, what I was preparing to do. Mm -hmm. I was I was preparing on all helping that person that is owing that is owning an abato so that he can yeah. be able to supply stores more like the show bright and stuff so that we can increase the quantity of chickens mm -hmm. that he's taking from me. Of course, I'm in a plans of um building a proper structure of which is at least it might be um, a you can still do that um, depending you can city. still do that. Anga, mm -hmm. you can still do that, but depending yeah, on capa something. there's nothing there's also nothing stopping you from getting your own customers and saying mm -hmm. so he becomes a supplier to you in the same way you supplying him with chickens to then sell on to retailers, he can still become your supplier so that he slaughters and prepares the chicken for you to sell to your customers. Oh, thank you so much. I've been stuck on just one thing, you know. I know. I I think I have another option. Thank you so much. Yes. So so I think now it's for you to go out and market yourself. So mm. go to the restaurants in the area, to the hotels and lodges, and say, hey, I I grow chickens and I'm able to provide you with fresh chicken, maybe on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be frozen. Okay. It's not going to be frozen. That's no, one thing that's, that's also cool. differentiating. Yeah. We'll see, they'll be able to get it. You, It's slaughtered, exeni, and damba, are you delivering? Yeah. Okay, I know I I get it. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you. Sure, Anga. All the best. And please Thank contact you. Rainbow. Please check about Rainbow's Enterprise Development Program. I'll definitely do it tomorrow morning. I'll I'll okay. I won't forget. I'll do All right, it. sure. Thank you. All right. Okay. Oh, we have we Doc. Do. Hey, Doc. <laughs> when did you join, Doc? I I truly uh, I joined just half past. Oh, okay, okay. Anything else you wanna say to Anga? Uh, no, I think I think you have given a um a good advice. That that's one thing that we we have learned with entrepreneurs. Uh, Mm. Uh, they don't want they, they they like to stretch to this big cooperative co 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 cooperatives or mm. uh, or companies that are operating on on their area because mm. that is where they can get more enterprise development uh, mm. like the one you are you are referring to as a uh, rainbow yes yeah um, they can they can supply uh, them they can mm. they can put them to their standards and yes. you know that's that's a program that most of of uh, uh, entrepreneurs we tell them to go to to say okay. if you are having like a mine closer to you you are having your sugar cane industry or, or company around just go there forge mm. that relationship then they will assist yes. you with uh with uh, uh upscaling okay and I guess for those who don't know, Doc, uh, Dr. Mutikita specializes in agriculture. Yeah. Uh, Tsakani? Oh, yes. So today I have some questions for you in the comments. I was just, when yeah. you're ready for them, then I can read them for yeah. you. Yeah, now you can, you can read them. 
Okay. Um, this one is from Jennifer. She says, evening to be precious to your team entrepreneurs. I am in events and hospitality, working on increasing our client base and, and plans to diversify business. My background okay. is a bit noisy. Precious answered my question, though. Other entrepreneurs' comments and questions. Thank you all for an informative session. And... Oh, Andy Siwe says, Andy Siwe Dikana, I am currently looking at my mm -hmm. business model as I in initially was just targeting residential um, homeowner. Now I want to tap into the retail space. We manufacture cabinets and small furniture. The company is still relatively small and growing and gradually growing. However, not as much as I know we would like. How do I tap into the market with not enough capacity? Would I need to apply for funding to get all these things I need first to be able to meet their demand? Or should I just shoot my shots? Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. Company is relatively small. And this, okay. Um, so Jennifer is answered. I'm not sure, or maybe maybe Jennifer. Yes, if your Jennifer's point, if answer, yes. she okay. was saying thank you. Okay, all right. No, that's fine because I mean I had some questions and maybe some advice in terms of just div uh, diversifying their business because I mean events is very broad. So I just wanted to check what is their niche. And are they able to grow within that niche? Because in events, you have to be quite niche. Um, once you once you have a niche offering, then it becomes easier uh, to market yourself. And then even diversifying, I'm not sure what she wants to diversify to. But anyway, coming to Andy Siwe. Andy Siwe, are you able to come onto the floor? I have some questions for you so that I can be able to give you advice. Hi, sister. Hi, Hi sister. Am I clear enough? Uh, yes, I can hear you clearly. Where are you based? I am based in the Eastern Cape, Ekaber. Oh, Ekaber. Okay. Uh, okay. Are you able to get yourself to East London? Um. Yes, ma'am. Okay, because currently the NEF has a fund and they've been looking for furniture makers. They have actually grants for you guys. I and emailed no response like last week because someone sent me that. Um, the flyer. Yeah. Okay, who did you email? Uh... Let me quickly check on the email address. Okay, because we but can I, ask you, but then we'll, my advice is maybe go a different route. Um, Sakane, uh, you have uh, Rowena's details, ne? Yes, sir. Can you Can you please share them on the chat? Okay, and I'll then, do that just now. And then, yeah, so she'll share her email address and her cell phone number. And you can, so uh, uh, who did you send the email to? Is it the email on the flyer? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's fine. So you can say that you're a furniture maker, you're based in Kabecha, um, and you'd like to apply for the furniture grant. If she can please assist you with the application. They can assist okay. you in putting together the application. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, it, uh, will I be speaking to Rowena? Sorry. Will I be speaking to Rowena? Yes. Yeah. You can speak to Rowena and saying that you um that you've sent an inquiry, you haven't received any response, but you would like some assistance uh to apply uh to apply for the furniture grant. Thank so, you. I mean, so if there's funding, I would say definitely go for it. And then um, since you're still a small furniture maker, um, um, one of the things you could do is partner up with um, interior designers and also shop fitters. 
-hmm. So with interior designers, you can make custom pieces for them so that they're able to put them or use them in their projects. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's another that's another I mean avenue for growth. Retail is tricky, as you're saying, because of capacity. Um, yeah. So and and with retail as well, they pretty want a lot of standard, uh, you know, pieces and stuff. So I mean, you can go. Uh, who are you looking at approaching? I was looking at um CTM because I want to do the bathroom uh, vanities. Bathroom vanity. So don't go to CTM directly. Go to their holding company, which is Messmart. Mm -hmm. CTM is owned by Messmart, if I'm not mistaken. If I am mistaken, check who they are owned by. <laughs> okay. um, and then in the same way, I think similar advice that I gave to Anga, um, they do have um, enterprise development. Event development, yes. So you could say that you are a furniture maker, you want to do bathroom vanities, uh, you would you know, firstly, you would like to get into their program uh, so that you can get the support you require. And then secondly, you want to become a supplier and then they can assist you with the process of becoming a supplier. And also, um, and you see, there needs to be something interesting and unique about your vanities that's currently mm -hmm. not out there. So that when they see your work, they'll definitely want to, you know, to stock that. And especially if if it's something that would excite uh, their customers, because vanities are pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. So if you can come up with interesting designs. I hear you. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I just recently saw their partnership with the local um, local uh, designer, uh -huh. Tabo Market. Uh, I like uh -huh. what they did with her. Although it's yeah. um, it's tiles, it's not necessarily yeah. um, cabinetry. But I oh, are they which... are they doing the basutu design on tiles? Yes, and it's it's okay. very beautiful. Um, okay. Well, I guess then that they are open because if you can add an interesting, yeah. maybe African, African element to your vanities, because that's actually my my our product USP is that we want to African motifs and and style into mm. our into our furniture and 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 cabinetry. Yeah. So, I, so I that's what you, you can you, you can go that route, but also try partnering with, um, as I said, interior designers and shop fitters, because shop fitters will be doing, uh, especially if you could find someone who does uh, a lot of regular jobs at malls, who works maybe even with the franchise. You know, um, I, I'm just thinking, like, think about KFC, because you've seen KFC every now and again, they change the look and feel of their yeah, of yeah. their stores. So imagine you partner with someone who does shop fitting for KFC, and they able to showcase your design to KFC, and they can incorporate that somewhere in their store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you then, mean. Have you seen then suddenly? Local? Then suddenly, it's not only just you, you know, going to KFC, but you're partnering with someone who already has a relationship, and you can work yeah. with them. And and they're a shop fitter, so obviously, the technical part of what you're doing, they're able to do. Mm. I hear. You. And thank you, okay. thank you for that insight. Lots of food for thought and homework. A lot, <laughs> a lot. You know, I've been jotting down literally everything, but I Sorry? look forward to. Speak to you. I'm saying I've been jotting down everything, so that's why in between there's like real moments of silence. 
silence. Because I'm okay. trying to process everything and write it out as much as I can so that I can get that to its end. Mm. Okay. All right. All the best. So I'll, I think we can. We've got time for maybe one more. Do we have any other hands? I don't see hands. Who? Okay. I think if there's nothing else, I mean, um, my advice to you guys um, in terms of getting new clients and getting access to new markets, one way, is, as I'd mentioned, is really through collaboration. See who you can partner with and see who you're able. To. So if you do have a product or service, who you can partner with and perhaps bundle your product and service with theirs. And in that way, you're able to tap into their customer base as well. So, for example, um, if you, um, yeah, I'll make a, a small example. So let's say you provide um, hair products. So one thing you could do is find someone who sells wigs and extensions and things like that. And they probably have a customer base. And if you are selling hair products, is partnering with them. So they sell bundles, buy a week. And if you've got week shampoos and even um, sprays or things that you can use uh, to treat weeks, for example, it makes sense that you partner with that individual and you sell your products as, as a bundle. So you get the wigs plus the, the products to, to maintain your week. Uh, as an example. So think about your own product and service and what can you match it up with that would then add value for your customers. So like in this example, um, there's more value created for a customer. Is If I'm buying a week and in one go, I can get the products as well to maintain my week, that adds a value for me as a customer. So if you want to partner with someone, it also makes sense if you're saying if we bundle our products, we're then creating more value uh, for, for the customer. All right, ladies and gents. Uh, no, what, Nogusha events, you wanted to say something? Yes, everything says to the, the listener value. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. It's not that good. Uh, okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just wanted uh, to make some inquiry as well because uh, I run an accommodation in the Mbumbulu Rural. It's an accommodation. We also do events, events management on site. Mm -hmm host the weddings as well. Yes. So I think the business is responding quite very well. But now the thing is that it tends to be seasonal. Mm. Uh, like after the December peak, it just goes quite up until it starts. Now you have mm. staff that you need to lay off at times uh, and you really cannot say, uh, survive during these hard months. Uh, mm -hmm. So now I was thinking of maybe uh, how do I try and uh, during that period, uh, mm -hmm. maybe have something that I would like, maybe like that I can make like manufacture or anything like that. But the main thing that we needed was our stock because mostly our stock, uh, we, we all or most of more, most of our stuff we have to import it from uh, say from these other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, what stock over. do you have? What are you selling? Like the events, the events furniture. Oh, the, the furniture and stuff. Okay. 
Yes, yes. So yes. it's that by once. But now the problem, it's expensive and we're targeting a, a segment of, uh, say, the niche class that we're targeting. So it, the furniture comes in very expensive. And now sometimes it gets uh, stolen or it breaks. It needs to be fixed uh, because mm. now we, well, once it's peak, it, it gets busier with the furniture and all that stuff. So now okay. my, my my wish now was that if I can be able say to get a steel structure that I can utilize during the off season, maybe be able to start my own furniture in there rather than uh, importing. Know that okay, we started our manufacturing, um, and then we can also supply these other guys that are coming up or even the other guys that are big, we can try and supply them with this event furniture like chairs that we can start and manufacture. But now my main, 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 main need was that if I can get, for me to get started as a manufacturer of that furniture, uh, I also need to have this uh, structure, this uh, steel structure that can be used as a makeshift as well, where I can host events right in there when it's a, it's the peak season or when we have uh, enough bookings. But when it's dry, I can utilize that as a maybe as a workshop. Uh, use it as it's going to be multi multi dimensional in its use. Uh, so sorry, what is my, your name? My name is uh, Otto Zakeni Otto Kuzwa. <laughs> okay, Otto. Okay, yeah. I think. So the the hospitality property you own, how big is it? Uh, I say it's a hectare. Okay, so, and then what do you have on the property? On the property, we have um, a main. We have just a, a main guest house, which is a four bedroom house with five queen beds. And then, and then uh, another another big room which has uh, tri banks, about two tri banks in it. So in total, it takes about twenty people that sleep. It's with an open lounge and kitchen, and then the, the, those uh, rooms that are there. And we have an uh, outside. We have two external executive rendezvous that are also hired out as a part a part of the guest house. So maybe for two people, they might use their own doubles. But if it's a group or it's more people, then they use the main house or take the whole of their guest house. Then we have a storage facility where we keep all our uh, events furniture because it's from furniture, we just bring everything. It's furniture, it's cutlery, hey, all of the stuff too for events. Even marquees, we do supply marquees and stretch them. So the main thing now is that all of this stuff, we need to be able to repair it and end up trying to manufacture on site so that even the people, because it's a rural area, but even if the people can be able to get more work in the area, as we got about, maybe on several basis, we end up having about 15 people on site okay. for work. Otto, Otto. Yes, Otto. Otto, Otto, you're located in Yes, and boom, boom, ma'am. So, what's the, so let's yes. focus on one thing. Yes. On the hospitality side, you, it, it is a, a, a cyclical uh, business. So when are yes. you busiest? The busiest will be, say, during Easter, but mostly that will be uh, during the festive period. But other than that, okay. depending how, uh, how people, because they even come over, to use the venue as a wedding venue. So we host weddings as well. But now okay. it depends when people do have money. Like now it's quite times people don't have money. They even uh, postponing their initial, initial plans and concessions that they had made for weddings and all that stuff. Okay. So for me, what I think first things first um, yes. is try to find alternative uses for your hospitality venue when there is uh, the down season. Mm. Uh, so one of the things that you could look at is maybe trying to target churches, trying to target schools, uh, social clubs who might want to run workshops, uh, who might want to run conferences and things like that. 
Yeah, because yes. on, on that uh, soul, it's just that uh, we normally erect marquees because we do have frame tents that marquees. If, say, we're yes. having a wedding for 200 to 300 people. But I'm saying, are you targeting churches? Are you targeting schools? Are you targeting societies, social clubs? Uh, yes, they do. They do frequent, not as much, but they are those. So, but that you're are... not. But are you targeting them? Are you going to them specifically and selling yourself to them? Uh, no, 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 not on that note. Yes. Because okay. now the whole thing, yes, I fully understand. The thing is that, uh, I think in okay, the normal course. So wait, let's finish on this one, Otto, first. So first, you need to find alternative ways of um, making money during down season. And you need to yes. find new target customers yes. uh, for, for your venue. There's a lady yes. I was just getting to right here, right now who manufactures yeah. furniture. Why do you have to start? Why can't you use her as your supplier? Yeah, but I don't I don't even... <laughs> maybe I'll get her details as well, because I don't know. You were listening. I was talking to her. She's a... Well, now you still want to start from scratch. And you say, Khalil. Yes, All you have yes. to do no, is tell her what you I want. Can even the, I can even lend the ropes from her as well because if she's not in my area, because I see it as well as starting that the making of the it's a good one that I start to her with everything given in business. Yes, then I can learn from there. Mm. But I also think in the area, like if I can get funding, I can be able to capacitate the business as well by having that skill structure that I can use for conferences and start maybe asking corporates to come over, knowing that, okay, I can have conferences in there, I can bring in schools. And then when it's quiet, then I can start this because this is the idea that I have. You see, mm. I can do my repairs in there. I can hire more people in the area. But it's not mm. a problem. The lady that uh, is also on this, I'll gladly Andy try. Siwe. Her name is Andy Siwe. Andy Siwe. Oh, thank you for yes. that. No, I'll take a number on the, on the group. Yeah, or you can but ask her. Oh, she's with... on Andy Siwe. She's still here. Oh, she's still here. Oh, yes, okay. Andy I, Siwe. I, yeah. I, just, I just came back. I got cut off um, right now. Oh, no, this gentleman saying he but making furniture for events and i'm saying why does yeah. he have to start from scratch when he can start mm. by outsourcing to you you can supply yeah. him with what he requires mm. perfect and these are the kinds of things that we're looking for collaboration yes 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 this is you hello hi buddy i'll 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 give all Otakane my numbers to you. Oh, okay. okay. No, I appreciate. Thanks for that. Thanks very much, Dad. Okay. So, Otto, please get in touch yeah. with her. Okay. No, I'll try my best. Uh, oh, no, don't change. try your best. Yes. Just say yes. I'll get in touch with her. <laughs> no, sorry for that. Yes. No, I, I'll be in touch with her. <laughs> Okay. I'm multitasking, yeah, now that's why I'm like this. All uh, right. Okay. But no, thanks for your time. Thanks for the advice. Then uh, I'll I'll be in touch with uh, her. Right. Uh, uh, tomorrow morning, then we discuss everything. But thanks for that opinion. But other than that, I still want to think my idea because it's something that I've tried to save for, say, from 2020, but I, I see that I can't save for this. Oh, so I, first, <laughs> before you build your structure and all of that, you've got to be able to determine that there's demand. Yes, yes. There's yeah. demand for it, because the last thing you want yes. is investing money, and there's no demand for what you're providing. But, yeah, yeah. No, but there is a demand. It's just that, as I said, uh, it's seasonal. But there is a demand, and once people start having money, uh, once they get used to this, that they, there's nothing, they'll carry on with their functions that they've been uh, wanting to bring in our field. So I think there is a demand, and uh, other than that, having this structure will also assist me uh, 
in being a multidimensional in the use of the structure and okay. the business as well, and being able to employ more people there because that's uh, what I think uh, will also be good for the for the rural area the way we in. Okay. All right, guys, uh, it's 11 past seven. Um, I guess we can wrap it up for today. Uh, thank you very much for staying through and listening. Hope you're making notes, even if you didn't say anything. And that the session was worthwhile and that you learned one or two things. All right. Thank you very much, guys. And may you have a good weekend and a productive week next week. All right. Cheers. Bye. 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 Thanks, Julie.